Connecting, excellent. I'm gonna spotlight myself that way. I am spotlit for everyone, but I can still hear all of you and see all of you, which is very important. So um, anyways, good evening everyone and welcome to class number uno of Cooking with the Cantor this year, okay? It is my hope that we will get through four classes this year like we typically try to. Um, and, uh, and, you know, but we're doing this obviously in a different kind of format. I see a couple of you who are following the format and cooking with me. I see some of you that are choosing to just watch and I hope I'm entertaining enough. And, um, and we are going to start things off. We're going to, you know, my goal is to have us all done in about an hour. Wait. So did I hear someone say, wait, no, 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 put us on mute maybe so we don't want to interrupt them. Are you good? All right, as long as you're good. All right, so my goal is to have us all done in about an hour. It might be a little more, but it won't be a little less. That I can promise. So the first thing is we've got our bread ready to go. Our bread is just in the greased container, okay? But first, before we can make that, we've got to make the stuff that has to go on top of it. So I'm gonna grab my blender, all right? And we're gonna add into here one cup of 2% milk, right? One cup, 2%, a quarter cup of maple syrup. Yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy, tummy, tummy. Elliot and I both agree that there is never anything that is worse with maple syrup. Everything's good with maple syrup. We're gonna put in six eggs. Come on now, get out of there. It says a half a cup of maple syrup. Oh, it is a half a cup. I'll get some more. Thank you. I misread it. No, thank you for catching me on that because I love maple syrup. Me too. And I obviously misread that. And then don't forget to put extra rum in it. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, we doubled up on the rum. You doubled up on the rum, huh? Yeah. Hello, Matlises. Good to see you guys. Good to see you too. We are in the process right now of making the uh, French toast so that we can get that all soaking in the fridge and getting ready for us. Up oh, and here come Major and Mart. Bonsoir, Mart. We are in the process right now of making our French toast. So I've already shown everybody the bread that I put into the 13 by nine inch container. Um, greased container, but so far that's all that's in there. Right now I've added into my blender, I've added my milk, my maple syrup, my six large eggs. I'm gonna add some Neufchatel cheese or reduced fat, um, uh, reduced fat cream cheese. We're gonna add two of our bananas, right? One and two. And we are going to add a tablespoon of rum. Can't go wrong with that. Nope. You can use whatever rum of your choice. Hey, put another tablespoon in there. Oh, stop it, Elliot. <laughs> then it'll be a different number of points, Elliot. <laughs> I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm doing the drive-by later. There you go. Teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of fresh lemon juice. Ooh, we did two tablespoons, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We sure did. So I'm not going to do it from my mise en place container because just like I misread the, the uh, just like I misread our wonderful maple syrup, I misread that one. And we're gonna put in a half a teaspoon of nutmeg and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Mm. Yeah. Which I love. I know cinnamon is not my friend Gil Swartz's favorite spice in the world. But it's I okay. have to... it's not with fruit. It's and not with fruit. Kind of don't count. Yeah. That's true, it's not with fruit. All right, there we go. And I didn't quite get a full teaspoon, uh, half teaspoon of cinnamon in there. So I'm just gonna throw in just a dash of more. 
Ooh, this is a new kind of ceiling. Forget about that. Great. Another little dash will do me. Okay. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Just gonna kind of eyeball that. All right, now I'm gonna seal this container. I apologize because it's gonna be loud for a second. I'm gonna throw it on my blender. Let me turn this over here so you can see my favorite new toy. My favorite new toy is my Vitamix, which is fabulous. And I'm gonna turn that on low and I'm gonna bring it up to high. And everything is nicely combined in about 15 seconds. That's the miracle of Vitamix. Is this a commercial? No. <laughs> and now I'm going to take this, I'm going to pour it over my bread. I'm going to pour it over, pour it into my casserole dish, over my bread. I'm going to let the bread soak it in really nicely. Woo! Oh, it just fits. Perfect. So you can see now it's all in with my bread. I'm going to take the foil, I'm going to foil it. I'm going to throw it in the fridge and it's going to sit in the fridge for the next half hour. Alexa, set my timer for a half an hour. That way I'm going to know that it's been in there for at least a half an hour. For all of you that have an Alexa at home, I apologize if yours just set a timer. Oh, there we go. That puppy's sitting in there. All right, that's that. Let me just clean this out really quick. Look at this. I could totally be one of those demonstrators at Costco. All right, give me a second. Here's another noise for a second here. Beautiful. I eat them first. Vitamix is clean. Get all the stuff out of it. This is where I don't benefit from commercial breaks. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make our um, marinade for our beef, for our amazing short ribs. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Oh, whoops, need to rinse these out really quick. All right, here we go. Here's what we need. We need one cup of soy sauce. Do, do, do. You know what? I'm foolish. Take the lid. Oh, no, it I'm has not. a green cap, Elon. Is it low sodium? This one is actually reduced sodium, yes. Oh, I like the, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I try to be a little health conscious. Um, by the way, this is uh, uh, the, the last recipe that we just did, that we just started with the bananas and stuff. That is actually a recipe from Weight Watchers, believe it or not. Really? So, um, so that's pretty cool. So whereas you guys always criticize me for all these years of the amount of calories and every recipe I've brought you, um, you, can, you can't do it there. So this that's why it says to use wheat bread. That is why it says to use wheat bread, exactly. But I liked, I, I decided to use different. I decided that I wanted to use some cinnamon swirl bread. All right, I'm gonna put in a half a cup. Where's my half cup? Ah. You know where it is, right there. Whew. Where's your sous chef? Elliot makes me, makes me do all the schlep and fetch. All right, I'm going to put a half cup of sesame oil. I love sesame oil. 
If you've never cooked with sesame oil, it is super yummy and delicious. It's got a really wonderful sweetness to it. And we're gonna put a half a cup of mirin. Mirin is basically a sweet sake. What? It's a sweet sake. It's called mirin. A half a cup of mirin. Stop me if I end up putting in something I shouldn't. Because <laughs> it could totally happen. We're gonna put in four tablespoons of canola oil. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Whoops, exactly. That's why I said two, three. Did you catch that one? <laughs> two, three. All right, some vegetable oil. And what else do we need? We need um, a quarter cup of sugar. What I do with my quarter cup? Over here. Quarter cup of sugar. Sugar? Two dabs. One quarter cup of sugar. There we go. Fabulous. And we're going to put in a half a cup of chopped um, garlic. Now, if you have a Vitamix at home, you don't really need to chop them, but I did. So a half a cup of chopped garlic cloves. All right. And we're going to put in four chopped green onions. Four chopped green onions. But wait, there's more. And then we're going to add half of an onion. You can just roughly chop that because it's going into your blender anyway. So a half of an onion, a kiwi, which I sliced mine up, I peeled it and sliced it, but you can actually just cut it in half and take your spoon and go in and scoop it out and put a half a kiwi, you know, put, put both halves in that way. And about two tablespoons of sesame seeds. So, and there we've got a wonderful Korean marinade. So Cantor? Yes. I think the kiwi is an unusual addition. Usually it's a um, Asian pear. Yes, usually it would be an Asian pear. Um, this happens to be a, a recipe from Chef Roy Choi, as you saw. Um, I found a new show that is one of my favorite shows. If you have HBO Max, I highly recommend it, especially if you're one of those people that gets a little bit intimidated in the kitchen. If you get a little intimidated in the kitchen, you would love this show. It's called Selena and Chef, Selena plus Chef. It's uh, the pop star Selena Gomez, who is not a cook whatsoever, um, but she always wanted to learn. And so she brings in these incredible chefs to teach her a meal, basically. And just like we're doing, actually, exactly the same way that we're doing it here is the way she does it, because it's all during COVID. So she's in her kitchen, they're in their kitchen at home, and you get to watch them teach, and they're watching her, and they're like, oh, watch your fingers, you're gonna cut them, be careful! Put your, put your fingers in! You know, <laughs> it's very cute to watch them, because they're all very worried about her. Um, and uh, it's a great, great show. I highly recommend it. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed it. My mother-in-law enjoys it. We've watched, we've, we have binge watched two seasons of it already. Uh, there, are, there are only two seasons. The greatest part about the show, by the way, in my opinion, the greatest part about the show, beyond the great recipes and the cooking that goes on, is that every one of these chefs names their favorite charity and she donates $10,000 to their charity. So it's really incredible. So you get to learn about incredible charities as well. All right, so I'm going to uh, turn this on now, which means you're gonna have a little bit of noise for a second. So here we go. All right, and in 15 seconds, we've got this incredible Mary. Look at how the color changed. The color is so awesome. I love the color. 
I have a question. Yes, question. About, about a previous uh, recipe. When yeah. You, when you pour um, the syrup on top of your bread, does it float? Because <laughs> mine floats. My bread started lifting up. You want to kind of push it down a little bit and it'll start soaking up the, it'll start soaking it up. So, but it will, it will start to float. Yes, 100%. <laughs> It depends on how tightly you had it packed into your uh, 13 by nine dish. So if it wasn't too tight, then it's gonna float. So I'm gonna start off by pouring a little bit of this in the bottom of a, a, a bowl here. And I'm gonna start bringing in my amazing short ribs. I got mine flanken style, cause I happen to like it that way. And I'm just gonna pop them in, pop them into the to the bottom. I'm gonna fill up the bottom with short ribs, and then once mm -hmm. once I filled up the bottom, I'm gonna pour some more of the uh, some more of the marinade in. Looks like I can get about one container of of short ribs into the bottom, which is kind of cool. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. pour some more of the marinade over them. Okay, put another container in. Come on now. Where did you get the, the short ribs? Um, I actually got them at Albertsons. Oh. Yep. Boneless and everything? Uh, these are not boneless, they, but they're because they're flanken style, the bones are cut sideways, so it'll be really easy to take the bones out after they're cooked. Um, yeah, I could not find boneless short ribs anywhere. Like without going to a butcher. And by the way, because it's COVID, just uh, to, to be honest, all of my things that I needed got delivered yesterday. So I, I went ahead and did Instacart, had them all delivered. So I'm gonna put the third layer in now. Yeah, Instacart, they charge mm. for that. Oh God, so what? Instacart no, does saying, charge. I don't know how to do it. Instacart does charge. We've actually, we made the decision early on in COVID to pay the $9.99 a month for Instacart. Um, especially with my mother-in-law living here, we didn't want her ever going out to a grocery store. Um, and uh, so we pay the monthly, we pay the monthly charge and it really lowers the delivery and all that stuff. Lowers it pretty significantly. So, um, all right. And then I'm gonna pour the rest of this over it. And I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. You can, you can, by the way, you can kind of make sure that your short ribs are all under there. You can massage them a little bit. It's kind of fun. Except for then your fingers get all crazy and gooky. Um, gooky is a technical term in case you didn't know. It's, 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 what, it's what professional chefs use. They call it gooky. Right, Elliot? Elliot's like, no comments. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put a lid on this. I'm going to throw this in the why, fridge. Why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who else is there. So this is the I don't have to find the unmute button. Yeah. We're what sharing. Have you it's the double screen we have. So we're sharing this double screen. It's, it's like a double wide. We, we have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I think you should that should be a write off the Vitamix. Hey, I like that, Elliot. Thank you. This, this, true. Class, this class is going pretty fast, so we're just copying off Gail oh. and Elliot. <laughs> Wait, I missed that because I had water running. What was that? I said this class is going pretty fast, so we're just copying off of Gail and Elliot. We're we're <laughs> All right, I'm going to make some noise. Sorry. All right. So we've got now the two things that needed to be going that have to be sitting for a minute. I want to I want to encourage you to uh, preheat your oven to 350 degrees right now. 
so that you're ready for it a little bit later. All right. So if you haven't turned on your oven and preheated it to 350, please do so. Just use Elliot. No, I want to hit one him. All right. I know that you guys are saying, but Cantor, isn't this drinking with the Cantor? We need a cocktail. So we're going to get started on our cocktail really quick here because we need it. I need it. Right. That's Rebecca Schwartz. Trash has been emptied. Mostly. All right, so here we go. What do I have here? I've got some Tito's vodka. Tito's is a great vodka, by the way. It's handmade. It is um, It is a really yummy potato vodka. It's a non-grain vodka, by the way. I've got some triple sec. Okay. I've got some beautiful Midori green and yummy looking okay i've got my glass of ice which i just want to make sure i drain any of the water that has gone into it and i've got my mixing cup i'm going to put the ice in the mixing cup all right why do you and vitamix this one doesn't require a vitamix elliot no vitamix for this one this one just requires a two and a four second pour <laughs> and, an, and an eight second pour, sorry. All right, so I'm gonna put a half an ounce of triple sec. I'm gonna put one ounce of Midori. And I'm gonna put two ounces of vodka. All right. You were one count short on the vodka. Was I? Yes. That's okay, that's gonna be great. I'm gonna shake it up really well. It's gonna make it really pretty. I'm gonna pour it into my glass. Woo! Look at how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty? And I'm gonna take a little bit of club soda, about four ounces or so. But honestly, what you can do is you can just fill up your glass with whatever's whatever space is left with your club soda. And then we're gonna take this orange right here. Cut it in half. And I'm gonna cut a slice out of it. And I'm gonna break it open and there we go. This is your melon what is it called again? Melon Patch Cocktail. Sorry, I always forget what it's called. This is your Melon Patch Cocktail. Um, I do recommend probably stirring it just a little bit once you put in the, the soda. And uh, L'chaim, everyone. Oh, that's really yummy. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is super yummy. All right, so how are we doing here? We're at 6.30. I think we're doing all right. Um, all right, we're going to go back to our, uh, to Roy Choi's Korean barbecue short rib breakfast tacos, because why not? They sound delectable and lovely and delicious. Um, I'll just move some stuff. I just have to move some stuff out of my way because you never want to be cooking in a dirty kitchen as much as you can avoid it. All righty. Now I, that's that's right. But if you wouldn't mind just coming and rinsing the uh, the the measuring cups, goose, that would be awesome. Thank you. All right. Ooh, this is really a good drink. <laughs> Becca, I know you're gonna like this drink because I know that you're like my Midori sour girl, right? <laughs> Yeah, I was just saying that I haven't had Midori in a while, and it looks good. See, now I've given you a new way, a new way to have it. What's really nice about this drink, by the way, is it's very light. I know it looked like a lot of alcohol going in there, but it's not. It's actually very, very light, this cocktail. You're not going to feel like you're you're drinking, you're not even going to feel like you're drinking alcohol, which could be very dangerous, but, uh, but it's really, really yummy. All right, we're going to move on to our salsa verde. That's the next part of our recipe. 
It starts at step number six. All right. So I'm going to take my pan over here, taking my pot. Oh, I'm going to put in two cups of canola oil. Hi, Granny Goose. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> see me <laughs> they can see you but very okay. you're very small back there very I mean, small. you're very small in real life but you're very small back there especially <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, so we're gonna put two cups and two cups of garlic cloves two cups of garlic cloves yes I said that I did not stutter I actually made sure that I reconfirmed it even when I first read that and I'm gonna throw that on the stove I'm just gonna throw it on the stove over low medium heat I'm going to turn this this way a little bit so y'all can see me even over here. So over low, medium heat. It's frozen back. All right, and we're just going to let that simmer over low, medium heat. That's all we're doing over there. At the same time now, at the same time now, we're going to um, take the other half of our onion that we used earlier and we're going to chop it up. I've already done that. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Um, Did you put it in the oh, with the jalapenos. There we go. And we're going to take two to three jalapenos and we're going to chop those up. Now, my family doesn't like things super hot. So I only did two jalapenos. And I also took out most of the seeds because the seeds are where you're going to get a lot of the heat. Okay. Um, Roy Choi does not say to take out the seeds. I did it because I just know my family. All right, so it's up to you how you want your heat and stuff like that. Two to three chopped up jalapenos. Here we go. You can see them here. They're nicely chopped. All right, right on top. And underneath them are some onions all chopped up. And I'm going to take... What's that? You can give the seeds to Rebecca and Oscar. Exactly. Because they like things even hotter. So... Turn it on my turn it on my other pan over here, just a frying pan. I'm gonna throw a little drop of canola oil in there. And for this, we really want these to get nicely browned and uh, and ready to go. So let me get that going there. I'm gonna dump all that into my pan. And as Ron Popeil used to say, I'm gonna set it and forget it. Um, I'm just gonna let this do its job. Okay, over about medium high heat for that one. Um, and we're gonna move on to the salsa roja. Okay, see how quickly we move here? So there's a lot of steps here, but it's actually not so crazy. So we're gonna move on to the salsa roja. That's back in our blender again. And actually the salsa verde will be too, but uh, we're gonna use the blender actually three more times. So the blender gets used a lot in this recipe. Okay, so for the salsa roja, I grab my measuring cups. Oh, you put them over here. Mm -hmm. You've made them so nice and convenient for me. No wonder I couldn't find them. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put another cup of soy sauce for the salsa roja. I want to thank you guys for allowing me to be able to uh, empty out my cabinet of all my old ingredients and replace them with newer ingredients. Very important to be able to do. All right. Any questions so far? Everybody doing well? Ronnie Kaufman. Ronnie, I think this is the very first cooking with the canter you've ever been to. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, no, you're right. You're right. It's not the first time. I was there on the days it was drinking with the canter. It's still, it's still drinking with the canter. Did you see my cocktail? It's wonderful. <laughs> no, I witnessed many great cooking classes by you and your other special guest chefs. Oh, well, thank you. I love my special guest chefs. And you're going you're gonna to get to experience classes with them in this medium as well, we hope. So um, I'm going to put another half a cup of sesame oil. Love the sesame oil. It's so yummy. 
Don't you love those little uh, spouts? What was that? Don't you love those little spouts that they have? They are so helpful, aren't they, Elliot? And the fact that they don't even allow you to be able to take them off. Ooh, that's coming out yummy. Get a little more fire underneath my garlic over there. And um, what am I putting in here? Uh, another cup of canola oil and two cups of rice wine vinegar. All right, so another cup of canola oil. That was a half cup. That was stupid. <laughs> another cup of canola oil. Oh, who's joining us? Carla Edelstein. Sorry, we're late. That's okay. You're here. That's what matters. And we're going to do two cups of rice wine vinegar. This one, hopefully, I can get the top off, which I could. Thank God. Rice wine vinegar is really stinky, but it's really yummy. So you just have to live with it for a minute. Because once you've lived with it for a minute, you're going to be just fine. <laughs> You become nose blind. You become nose blind, exactly. Um, it was two cups. Yes, it was. Just making sure. Because I'll tell you a funny story about that. Recently, I was make, recently, my wife was making some stew. And it called for, what was it, a cup? A cup or two cups? It was like two cups of apple cider. And she put in two cups of apple cider vinegar. And if you tell her I told you, I'm going to deny it all over the place. All right. And then she called me. She said, what do I do? Right. And then she called Elliot because she didn't know what to do about it. So, and she wouldn't believe me, of course. So into that now, I'm going to put eight cloves of garlic, two rough chopped green onions. They can't see you down there. You don't have to do the whole... You think that I, I think Jordan loved Gadna and Israel so much that she's doing like a military crawl to try and stay under the radar. Okay, so I'm putting eight cloves of garlic and and two more rough chopped green onions, and now I'm going to put in a quarter cup of gochugaru. Gochugaru is Korean. Um, let me find it really quick. It's a Korean red chili. Um, is it? No, that's not it. Where did I put the gochugaru? Oh, I put it up here. So, McCormick's makes it, they call it Korean style red pepper. Alright. You can see it right there, Korean style red pepper. And I'm going to put in a quarter cup of it. It's a little more smoky and a little less hot than red pepper. Second, see this is coming. This is just starting to get dark, so it's almost ready. All right, quarter cup of gochugaru. Um, say that five times fast. And we're gonna do a quarter, another quarter cup of sugar. Hey, there's a microphone over there. Yeah. <laughs> another quarter cup of sugar. And some, whoops, there it is. And some sesame seeds. I like sesame seeds. I hope you like sesame seeds. All right. Then we're going to take a stalk of ginger and we're going to peel it. I wanted to show you guys about peeling ginger. I've already peeled mine, but I'm going to take one piece to show you. So... Ginger is a very nubby, 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 nubby thing, right? So the way that chefs peel ginger is oftentimes with a spoon. So if you take your spoon, can you guys see over here? I think you can. If you take your spoon, then you can just dig into it and just peel off the skin. I'm not gonna tell you it's easy, because that would be a lie, okay? But it's still yummy. All right, so I'm going to take my half a cup of fresh ginger 
and throw that in there as well. And then it's time to blend. It's time to make our salsa roja. Hey, All right. Sir? Yes. When I use the spoon, I like to pull it towards me versus pushing it away like a... I actually noticed that today when I was working on it too. It is easier when you push it towards you. I forgot to mention that. Thank you, Elliot, for bringing that up. But I find that even with a, even when I'm doing just a regular vegetable peeler. Oops. All right, so right now I just wanna show you, these are pretty much done. You can see that they're pretty dark. You know, don't be afraid of them being pretty well cooked. All right? And my friends, the oil and the garlic, I'm also gonna turn that off right now because it's kind of boiling up a little bit. All right, so that's, I'm turning off and we're good with that. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, oops, I'm gonna blend this, hold on, give me a second, there's gonna be noise. Here's our salsa roja, all done here. Our red salsa. Okay. Mm. Oh my God, that's so yummy. I'm just gonna pour it back into this bowl where the gochugaru was in earlier. It is beautiful. Give it a good little taste here. Mm. Oh, that's yummy. It's got a very similar flavor to the marinade, so it's really gonna go perfectly on to our meat. Alexa, off. All right, so I've cleaned out my blender. I'm gonna pull my, um, I'm gonna pull my bread now out of the fridge and I'm gonna throw it in the oven. All right, we're gonna put it in the oven at 350 for, actually before we do that, whoo. It's a good thing I remember to read things. You changed the pictures. Carlin. Hmm? Carlin, okay. I'm going to take two more bananas. I'm going to peel them and I'm just going to slice them up. So that I can add some more bananas into the midst of the bread. Oh, my fingers are fine. <laughs> I try to tell her that's the secret sauce. That's right. Oh, that one was too thick. Fix that. <laughs> I will say that, in my mind at least, this concept of the fingers back is definitely something that you've got to get very accustomed to in culinary school because it just feels very uncomfortable. All right, I'm grabbing my bread. It should have soaked up a lot by now. So, boop. Is Natasha still floating? I hope not. <laughs> All right. Ooh, that looks yummy. I'm going to push my bread down into it again, a little bit more. And now I'm just going to take these bananas that I cut up and I'm going to kind of put them in here in between the bread. So we've got some of these yummy fresh bananas going in. Basically, you want to be able to get a banana, you know, some bananas in every single serving. Gail, mine is a little bit floating still, but I have uh, probably 20 more minutes to go. Mine's a little bit floaty too, Natasha, so it's okay. Okay, we're gonna have floaties then. You know what, it's all gonna bake into a beautiful casserole, so not to worry. It's gonna be like a custard. I like it to see him. 
It's going to end up being like a custard, Natasha. So it would, it it'll be, be really good. yummy. Mm -hmm. Promise you. Don't be afraid. My friend Elliot makes some of the best French toast that I know. And it's always really, really juicy at the beginning. And then it becomes this like incredible custard. We can so, confirm that, by the way. Yes, I know you can confirm that. That's what I'm looking for, custard. Yep. That's what you're going to get. Hey, George, can you feed the pup? Thank you. Because he's obviously not having this for dinner. <laughs> All right. Got a couple more bananas to get in here. Do, do, do. Oh, I missed a spot. It's terrible when you miss a spot. All right, so the bananas are all in. I'm going to cover it with foil. We're going to throw it in the oven for 25 minutes. It should totally set it up. All right, that is in. Let me just go and wash off my cutting board. What was that? All two of them. Well, there's four of them. The mat are not on mute, just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> now, by the way, I want to give my friend Elliot Swartz a lot of credit here. Um, because while you may have thought, why is the canter only making two things and a cocktail? Elliot had said to me about a month and a half ago when I called him up and said, here's how I'm thinking about doing uh, cooking with the canter. And Elliot said, I don't think you want to do a four course meal. <laughs> I think that if you do that, it's going to be too much. And he was 100% correct, which is why I always listen to my friend Elliot. All right. The next thing that we're supposed to do is actually to take a Dutch oven or some kind of a big pot and put oil about halfway up, and that's to fry our tater tots, okay? I, however, am going to air fry them because I'm trying to keep down on the calories. I saw that in the recipe and it turned me off. What was that, Carlin? I saw that recipe and I just went, no way, I'm never so I'm going to take some tater tots here. I'm just going to put them in a single layer on my on my pan here, okay? I'm going to throw these into my air fryer now for about 20 minutes. And those are going. Air fryer is that? So mine is a Black and Decker. It is actually a toaster slash air fryer combined. So, um, so I was we were talking about this. I was talking with uh, Stephen about this at the beginning of the class before people got here. Um, they have a really nice Cuisinart one at Costco right now. So if you're looking for an air fryer that's not going to be an eyesore on your counter. Um, Cuisinart also makes one that is that doubles as your toaster, um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and then I was mentioning that I saw an infomercial which really intrigued me, and usually I don't buy into infomercials because I know that most infomercials are some famous chef who's getting paid a lot of money just to put his name on a piece of crap. Um, however, the Emerald Lagasse air fryer actually looks really well made and uh, really interesting. So uh, I like the fact that it has a double fan and it has a rotisserie in it. So does the Cuisinart one, by the way. Um, I think the Emerald Lagasse one is somewhere around about $160, and the Cuisinart one at Costco, I think, is either $160 or $200. So, anyways, look, in this day and age, when all of us are at home cooking and eating, and most of us eating very unhealthily, um, 
you know, trying to find the ways to make it a little bit more healthy, like using an air fryer. It's worth doing it. All right, let's see where we are. Ah, it's time to take out my grill pan because it's time for us to cook our delicious. Let's keep it over. Time for us to cook our delicious short ribs. I hope that noise isn't too loud. The Cuisinart air fryer at Costco is on sale for $159. I thought it was $160. Thank you, Gail. It's a good, it's a good deal. And it's a good looking fryer too. Alrighty, so I've got my meat out. I'm heating up my grill pan here. I highly recommend getting yourself an indoor grill pan so you don't have to take it out to the barbecue all the time. Um, definitely makes a big difference. Can everybody hear me okay still? Are we okay? Excellent, good. So um, this is heating up. Once it gets nice and hot, I'm gonna just drizzle a little bit of oil over it. And then I'm gonna take this deliciousness and I'm gonna grill it up. Get that out of my way. Oh, I know what I haven't done for you guys yet. While that's heating up, I skipped a step. I skipped step number 13 in your recipe, which is where we take our cilantro. We take a bunch of cilantro and chop it up. We take an onion and we chop it up and we take and we squeeze some lime over it. And that's all we're doing. It's just going to be a little, a little salsa, a little onion salsa to throw on top. Okay. But I thought that I would show you guys how to dice an onion with no tears. I learned this, I think, from Elliot. So you take your onion and you chop it from the top. So you chop it through the stem part, basically. So you cut it in half. Then you chop off the top and you chop off the bottom. Okay? Now, from the side, the round part, from the side here, you're gonna cut right through, but not all the way. So it stays together. You're gonna cut to about a quarter of an inch from the other side. So it'll all stay together. There you go, I've already cut it now, and it's all staying together. And then you cut across it, and you're gonna get a perfect dice. And then when you get to the end of it, I don't like how thick that one is still. Then when you get to the end of it, you take that last piece, you turn it on its side, and you just chop through it to make a perfect dice. And there we've got the perfect diced onion, no tears, really quick and easy. I'm gonna dump that into here. All right. And I'm gonna take my lime. I'm gonna take my lime. Look at that lime, by the way. I just learned about this the other day. My limes on my tree are yellow. I learned from Judy Frankel that a ripe lime is yellow. That they keep the limes green to be able to tell the difference in the store, and that's why you don't get as much juice out of them, because they are not fully ripe. So here's a ripe lime. Just gonna cut it in half. Just gonna squeeze the juice over my salsa here. What do I do with my trash bowl? There it is. All right, squeezing the juice over it. It is a lot of juice, by the way. And I'm just gonna mix that all together just with my hand. Look at that, doesn't that look yummy? I see Oscar salivating. <laughs> my pan is hot enough and ready to go. So, I'm going to take a little bit of oil, drizzle it on my pan. Alrighty. I'm going to turn this so you can see. 
And I'm gonna take these delicious short ribs. Look at that. And I'm just gonna pop them on there. Getting in the car now. What's that? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go into get into the car now. <laughs> All right. And we want to get a nice char on these without them burning. Okay, just a few minutes on each side. Just gonna let that cook for a couple of minutes on each side. All right, it wasn't 60 minutes. I was wrong. <laughs> but we did start late, actually. We started 15 minutes late, didn't we? Flipping over. So, Yvonne, my apologies. I've got to run. I've got a six points meeting now, but Elliot's signing on by himself. All right, fantastic, Haley. Love you. Bye, everybody. Come on. Look at that. Look at those grill lines and stuff. Doesn't that look yummy? <laughs> All right, gonna have a little, little bit of my drink. Well, hi, everyone. Oh, Carlin's drinking with me. I knew you would, Carlin. God bless you. But Carlin's always got that white wine going. Mm. Yum. We are almost done here, folks, believe it or not. I don't know. Cuts the other way. So. Take your meat off. Look at that. Ooh, yummy. Put some more on. My kids are salivating. All right, the last of the meat. All right, so all the meat is on. While that's going, I'm just going to go wash up over here. <clears throat> all right. Let's see how this is coming out. For some reason, my back burner is making it hotter than my front burner. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> I mean, the good thing with short ribs, folks, is that 
kind of can't undercook them and you kind of can't overcook them. I mean, I guess you can. If you burn them, you're going to overcook them. But, but if they're a little bit undercooked, they're just going to be more on the medium rare side. It's not going to be the end of the end of the world for you. I left the water there. All right. Ooh, this is looking delish. Ooh. That is looking delectable, delightful, delicious, and lovely. Look at those. You should smell them. Looking good. Is there a drive-by later where we get a taco? What was that, Carla? We get to drive-by later and get a taco? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what Elliot would say. You can be the car behind me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my beef is done. Turning off the fire. And I'm just going to let it sit out here and rest a little bit. Remember that when you make meat, don't just take it right off the flame and eat it. Let it rest for about 10 minutes or so because that's gonna really let everything cook through. It's gonna let all the juices form. You don't wanna just, don't be impatient with your beef. All right, let me just close that. We don't wanna be impatient with our beef ever because that's when we end up saying, oh, it's undercooked and we throw it back on the fire. And then it's overcooked because we threw it back on the fire. So uh, so be careful about that. I see my friend Andy over there nodding in agreement because he is a great barbecuer. All right. Hi, Andy. What's that? I said hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. <laughs> exactly. All right. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take, we're going to make our last thing here before we do our eggs. Okay. This is our last sauce that we're going to make here. We're going to take our blender again. We are going to pour into that blender our cooked onions and the garlic and the oil. Look at this. This is delicious. Look at that. Garlic and oil. You can't go wrong. And we're going to take all of our wonderful onions and jalapenos and put that in there. This is going to be our salsa verde. All right, that all goes in there. It's delicious. And then, what do we have to put in there, too? We have to put five ounces of orange juice and five ounces of lime juice, which I happen to have right over here already done. So this is going to pour right in. Five ounces of orange juice, five ounces of lime juice. All right, and then... Six bunches of cilantro. Basically, you fill up the rest of your container with cilantro. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tear off the stems because I really want mostly the leafy part. I'm just gonna put these in here, let it fill up. Is that enough cilantro, Oscar? Still not enough. I know, I knew that. I knew you were gonna say that. Some more? That's uh, Rebecca's favorite uh, herb. Right, Rebecca? Why do I feel like your father is pulling my leg? Hard pass for me. <laughs> Hard pass, huh? All right. Now, you know, some people do have that genetic thing about cilantro. It's okay, Oscar can have all the cilantro. What was that? I said Oscar can have all the cilantro, so it works out. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna put the lid on here. I think I got everything in here now. Yes, I do. I'm gonna put my lid on, put it up here on my vata mix. Divided me the vegemin. Oh! 
that out of your way so you can watch this turn into a beautiful green sauce. Check this baby out. Take this poor little piece of cilantro that didn't get pureed in there. Oh wow, that is fresh and delicious. Now one of the things I liked about these recipes and one of the reasons why I did these recipes for tonight is that all of these, both of these recipes that we're doing, you can do so much of it the night before. So if you're gonna do this as a breakfast, do all your sauces, do your marinade, do all of that stuff the night before so that in the morning you wake up and in about a half hour, 45 minutes, you've got this amazing breakfast, okay? Because you don't need to slave in your kitchen to enjoy a beautiful brunch for Valentine's Day or whatever the case may be. All right, I'm gonna take my hot pan off of here. Whoo, hot pan, it's still hot. Let me check on my, checking on my tater tots over there. And I'm gonna take some taco sized flour tortillas. I'm a flour tortilla kind of guy. Some people might prefer corn tortillas. I happen to like flour tortillas for my breakfast tacos, okay? So I'm gonna take some flour tortillas over here that are taco sized. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And I am going to cook them on the open flame. Because that's the way my daddy taught me. Now, what can you do if you're watching your calories and you don't want to do something quite as caloric as a flour tortilla? You might ask. A corn tortilla. What was that? Well, there's corn and there, there's, um, oh, there's several choices. You have. So you can do corn tortillas. They're going to be a little bit better for you. Oh, you're talking about those wraps, those yes. veggie wraps? That was I hot. don't like those. All right. Let me throw a couple more of these on here. So at Costco, they have these amazing wraps. I'm going to show them to you in just a second. Um, and then at Trader Joe's, they have these other really cool wraps. So I'm going to show you both of those. But I'm going to do that without burning my... My amazing tortillas. All it's done. Oh, oh, so yummy. Look at how yummy that is. Doesn't that look great? Just toasting your tortillas, basically. Okay? So, check this out, though. I want to show you some options. Oh. For those of you who are being calorie conscious we've got egg wraps with cauliflower this is at costco egg wraps with cauliflower these are like big beautiful crepes basically but they're made with cauliflower and egg and um you can you can cook those up on your stovetop or if you really want like no calories whatsoever in your shell and still delicious these are jicama wraps <laughs> Sorry. These are jicama wraps. These are from these are from um, these are from our friends at Trader Joe's. They're this really one. good. They are yeah. super good. And look at that. They're they're like a little tiny street taco tortilla, basically. Oh. I don't think these are good anymore. I think these are good. Oh. Okay, we have others, but these ones don't seem to be good right now. So highly recommend those. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna scramble up some eggs, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my, to my frying pan here. Back to my frying pan. 
I'm going to take a bowl. Here we are. I'm going to put six eggs in it. I'm going to crack up six eggs here. Oh, in the meantime, I'm going to go over here to my amazing custard that's been made here. I'm going to take the foil off the top and cook it for another 10 minutes. Alexa, set timer for 10 minutes. Alexa, set timer for 10 minutes. Second timer, 10 minutes, starting now. All right, so we've got our incredible eggs going in here. Oops. That wasn't good. I never do that, but I did today. You know those things that you only do when people are watching? That was exactly what that was just now. All fixed. Murphy's law. <laughs> Murphy is really at me right now. Murphy is all over the place. Get off my thumb. Just want to make sure I got everything out, which I have. Excellent. All right. So we're just going to take these six eggs. We're going to beat them up while I melt a couple of tablespoons of butter in the uh, in the pan. You might notice, by the way, that in all the stuff that we've been cooking here, not highly caloric. Um, you know, I mean, the butter is gonna be one of the most caloric things that we're putting in here. Oops. All right, we're gonna let that go ahead and melt down at about a medium heat. By the way, if you're interested in knowing, ooh, why do I feel like I forgot something somewhere? Because I did. All right, so we're gonna just beat this up. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of pepper. I mean, a little bit of salt, rather. I'm not a big pepper fan of my eggs. Okay. Where was that supposed to be? That was supposed to have been in there. Mm. I forgot to put some salt and some pepper in the, uh, in the, uh, in the salsa verde with the cilantro. So I'm just putting it in right now and then I'll just whisk it into it. All right. So I don't know about you, but I've always been kind of a high heat cooker on eggs. Well, Evidently, Chef Ludo really doesn't think that's a good idea. And, um, and neither did Roy Choi, actually. Roy Choi was like, no, no, no. Put it on medium heat, cook it a little slower. So we're gonna cook it here on medium heat. I'm just gonna kind of take the egg away from the sides as it starts to finish. Not going to take very long. I don't think I have to teach you guys how to make scrambled eggs, but you never know. I mean, I'm learning new things. You I'm can move the these. egg grabs, Cantor. What's that? Oh, are they in the way? Okay. Sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, Selena plus Chef, on her very first episode that she did, she decided to have Chef Ludo as her guest, who taught her how to make the perfect French omelet, which is really a bloody difficult thing to do, by the way. <laughs> a French omelet is not so easy. And um, every other chef that came on kind of laughed at her that he was her choice for the first chef. Because they were like, that's crazy. He's the mean chef. 
Do you <laughs> scrambled eggs? Do you put um, Parmesan cheese or cream fries? I did not. But if you want to add more calories like that, go right ahead. You know, if, if you have a certain thing that you love in your scrambled eggs, go ahead. But I will say this. I'm not so sure that I would put Parmesan only because it's going to bring another flavor into your taco that maybe you don't want. Um, you know? Oh, I'm not talking about with the taco. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, look, it's still a little bit on the runny side. Not totally, but it's still a little on the soft side at least. And at this point, you just turn off your flame and you leave it. Okay? So we're going to let that sit for a few minutes. Again, your eggs kind of, your scrambled eggs kind of like your meat. You let them rest for just a few minutes and they end up finishing on their own which is really exciting. Now, it, it is officially time for us to actually build our tacos. So, that's pretty awesome. Let's see how we're doing. I'm just gonna check on our French toast. Ooh, that's looking super yummy. All right. So I'm gonna take some of our meat here. I'm gonna put it on my cutting board. Because I because my meat was not um, was not boneless, so but because I got the flank in, I can easily just cut right along the bones and remove the bones. So you see, I'm just taking the bones out like that, and then you just want to take your meat and you want to just start cutting across it, slicing across it. So you have smaller, kind of bite-sized pieces to go into your tacos that really just fall apart and are absolutely delicious. Okay. Take our next piece here. I'm just going to cut right along the bone. This is going to make Carlin really happy too because by cutting along the bone, you're also getting rid of most of the fat. Um, so, and I know my friend Carlin. I approve. She is always criticizing the calories in every class. <laughs> and I totally understand it because if you have too many calories in your food, then you can't have your wine. Right, Carlin? Isn't that the reason? Exactly. Oh, you moved to red. Very nice. I rarely see you drinking red, Carlin. So what are you drinking there? You rarely see me. Well, now, but I'm just saying. <laughs> but whenever I've seen you in our class, you're usually always drinking white. So what are you drinking there, Carlin? Share. Well, as of January 27th, new cases decreased by 67%. Thank God. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, did you think you were only talking to your husband? <laughs> <laughs> right, I was telling you, I'm reading something. <laughs> All right, so I've got my meat cut here. Oh, this is, I'm kind of excited. I just have to taste this. Oh my God. Mm. Wow, that's good. All right. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take a tortilla, we're gonna throw it on here. We're gonna put our meat right down the middle. Okay. Then we're gonna take some of our lovely scrambled eggs, put that right on top of our meat. Okay. Look at that so far. So far you see that? We've got our eggs, we've got our meat. Then we're gonna take a little bit of our onion and cilantro salsa here, unless you're Becca. Then you're just gonna put extra on Oscars, okay? Then we're gonna take our, our salsa roja and our salsa verde and we're gonna put some of that on top. Here's the salsa roja. Ooh. 
And let's get some salsa verde. Let's hope I don't lose that. Yeah, you know what? Oh, I still need to beat that in. Yeah. There we go. So you mix the two salsas on your taco for yes, they, one? they go they go one on top of the other. Oh, that's somebody else's Alexa. Oh, there's mine. Alexa off. Oh, yes, I know. Oh, and I totally forgot the most important part. Thank you, Goose. Alexa off. I couldn't find any enabled video skills. That We've got multiple Alexas in our house that are all going off right now at the same time. So don't forget. I, I forgot to do this before I put my salsa and stuff on. Take a couple of your tater tots and just break them up on here. Your 10 minute timer on bedroom echo show is ringing. Alexa, turn off the 10 minute timer on the bedroom echo show. All right, and. Timer stopped on bedroom echo show. This is a big taco, but here is our breakfast taco. It's got everything on it. It looks really yummy. And I'm gonna tell you how it tastes. Guys, <laughs> Thanks. Well, you know, I, I invited you to cook it with me. <laughs> Seems like it should be a breakfast burrito. Mm. Oh, wow. You could make that a breakfast burrito easily. Of course you could. Mm. Jordan, come taste this. Tell me what you think. Wow. That is some delicious stuff. All right. I am about ready to take out our French toast as well. I'm going to save the French toast. How many people is this recipe for? It's all the recipes for. Isn't that yummy? Mm -hmm. The French toast will serve 12. Let me show you what just came out of the oven. There you go, Art. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> and that's out of the oven. And all we have to do, if you want, you can sprinkle some. What's the matter? It's so hot. It's not spicy. Was it? I don't like it? Did you get a spicy piece? Uh, that's crazy. So, um, so if you want, you can sprinkle some um, some confectioner's sugar over it. It's a pretty way to, to serve it. I am gonna just take a little service, a little serving out to show you guys. Right. What, what was that? It's like banana bread pudding. It kind of is. Yeah. We like this bread pudding. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. There's a serving of it. Yikes. Let's yeah. see how delicious it is. By the way, for those of you that are doing Weight Watchers that are on here, this is six points for a serving. Too many. So, <laughs> not horrible at all. How much is that? Oh, wow. What's Did the serving size? One ounce? Um, it's one twelfth of the casserole. Taste that. Okay. Is it good? I think so. Let's hear what Jordan has to say. Okay. Mm. I, still have, I still have my 16 points left. Just I know. I saved my points for right now. You can take that. You can. All right. Thank you. I actually probably want my, my casserole done a little bit more well done. So I'm going to throw it back in the oven. But um, wow. but it is all cooked oh, and looking good. delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. A little more firm. And with that, everybody... Bon appetit. Have a bon great appetit. night. I hope that you use these recipes. I recommend using them on the evening of the 13th because on the evening of the 13th, you can do all your preparation. And then on the morning of the 14th, you can serve it to your loved one, which would be really, really nice. And by the way, on the evening of the 13th, you can also join me and some of my wonderful colleagues 
for a wonderful salon concert of love songs. Right. So, um, so please get your reservations in for those as well. I, I really would like to know from everybody if you like the format of this class, if this is something that you want to see us do several more of with some other with some other guest chefs and stuff like that, or um, or if it's just not as much fun when we can't come together and eat, which I totally well, understand. That. We'd like to have it. You like it? Yeah. I liked it. Excellent. Just send the recipes a little earlier. Yes. Absolutely. Right, right. They would have come a little bit earlier, except for we literally did not have internet for about 36 hours in our house. Oh, wow. Which was really frustrating. Oh, um, yeah. And could we have simpler recipes? Because this is ridiculous. This is not hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This That's is dump hard. a bunch of stuff in your blender and blend, Carlin. Oh, I'm measuring the, this and the washing all the dishes. I'm just not into it. <laughs> I haven't had a lot of dishes, though. Okay, I'm going to make that French toast thing for art. French right. toast thing is really, really easy and really fun. Right. So I totally recommend that. It's really delicious. You're going to love it. it. <laughs> um, and what's great is that it doesn't need any maple syrup on it or anything like that. You've already got yeah. you've got a little bit of maple syrup inside of it, and it's just enough. Okay. Mm. okay. I'll tell him that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> he may not listen. <laughs> Art can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chef Cantor. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy these recipes. I hope you do them at home. Also, I really do hope that you take the opportunity, you know, take the opportunity during COVID while we're home. Go online, watch some cooking classes. You know, there's even classes on knife skills. There's classes on everything. Go on HBO Max, watch Selena, Selena Plus Chef. She has Jose Andreas on there. She's got some incredible chefs that came on to do amazing meals. And all the recipes are available on HBO Max. Um, so I really recommend it. I, I recommend it because for those of us like Carlin who say that's so much work, you watch this total novice who gets on there and does all of this stuff with the chefs and it's no big deal. And by the way, she screws up a lot too. She's had a couple of kitchen fires. She's had all kinds of fun stuff. So, so I love a lot of kitchen fire. Yeah, Elliot? Uh, also our, our, our dear friend from Chef Tech uh, also is doing some virtual classes. In That's right, Boston. Terry. Yeah, Terry, Terry and George. Chef Terry is doing some virtual classes. In fact, I'm hoping that I'm going to reach out to Chef Terry and see if she'd be willing to do one of these for us, because that would be a lot of fun. Um, and I think it's I think it'd be really awesome if she would. Oh, but um, but I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you enjoy the meal when you have a chance to make it. I see that in the uh, Rosenberg household, they are waiting for it to come out of the oven with bated <laughs> breath. I know. I see you. That looks like it's going to be fun. So. After you make these recipes, I want you to send me a text. Let me know how they went. Okay? All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you, Alon. Thank you. Thank you, Alon. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Alon. You bet. Lila Toe. Bye. Well, think to us. <laughs> <laughs>